we will roll. So tonight's topic is what makes airplanes fly. And it's not always what you think uh, that we're going to talk about tonight. This is a great webinar for a pilot in their training, a aspiring pilot, or maybe you're like Jeff or Caroline, maybe you're already a pilot, but this webinar is going to help you become a better mentor to future pilots. So I always like to keep my webinar sort of broad where everybody can learn something from them. So you need to put on the proper hat. Am I in training? Am I a student pilot? Look at it with those eyes. And if you're already a pilot, uh, maybe you're working on your instrument. You can use it for that too. But maybe you're like Jeff and you already have your instrument and you just want to be a proficient pilot. Let's put on the what can I learn to help share aviation with others? What can I learn from this to help grow aviation? So that's the attitude and the approach I want you to take uh, for this. But before we get to that, I want to share with you a little bit about myself and this great team here we have at M0A.com. For those of you who aren't familiar with us, because this is a big public webinar, there could be some people on here who don't quite know who we are. This is a shot of the team at uh, Oshkosh, uh, Larry. Ashley, Scott, and Matt are in that go to webinar question box answering your questions. So if you're on an iPad, you tap that question mark. Or if you're on a desktop, you can go to the questions box and you can type in your questions, your comments there. So be sure to say hi to Larry, my beautiful wife, Ashley, uh, Scott, and Matt as well. You can say hi to those guys. Uh, back to back, we are named Outstanding Flight Instructor 2014-2015 by AOPA. And of course, no presentation is complete without showing this picture. You've been to an mzoe.com seminar presentation. You've heard it a million times. But this is our aviation-themed household. You ready for this? The goats are Prop, Rudder, and Strut. And the dogs are Pedo and Magneto. So it is quite the aviation-themed household here uh, uh, at the Shepherds. We are up to now, geez, what is it, 10 books. I almost, I heard Scott on the phone today. He's going, yeah, I think we have like 10 books now. And I, I find myself saying the same thing. Like, I think we, we have 10 books now. But I, I believe that's where I look on Amazon and see. But we are knocking out and cranking out some flight training materials for you guys Secret of Perfect Lanes, In Flight Emergencies, our bestseller, Pass Your Private, Pass Your Instrument Pot Check Ride, ebooks, audiobooks, which are so beneficial. Listening to a mock check ride as you're walking the dog, as you're on the treadmill, at the gym, whatever it may be. Um, great, uh, one of our best sellers there. And of course, the new movie, Flying Again, which if you haven't had a chance to check out, Flying Again Movie. Dot com to order your DVD or Blu-ray. And also, um, in the coming weeks, I'll be releasing, we're doing a theatrical release of the movie Flying Again, coming to a big screen in a theater near you. So be watching for that as well. Of course, on top of our 10 best-selling books, we have our online ground school, which if you love our teaching style, you'll love our online ground school. We not only teach you about your instruments for your instrument pilot course, we take apart the instruments and show you those Android wafers and show you everything inside. You want to see a steep turn? Let me show it to you from this angle. It's the best of... If you love our YouTube videos that are, we put out there for free, imagine when you see the stuff on the paid side. It is just that much better. Everything shot in 4K, which is four times the quality of HD, to put it in plain English. And we have that plain English teaching style, prepping you for your check ride, prepping you for your written test, and most importantly, prepping you to be a safe real-world pilot. You can learn more about that on m0a.com or by going to groundschoolacademy.com. But let's get into the presentation now. And I want to start with a question for you guys, and it's this. What do you believe makes airplanes fly? Again, you and I communicate using that go to webinar control panel underneath the question box. I know I'm looking for an answer, but you can type in your answers in that question box. I'm going to see those come in there now. Let's read a few of these. Chris W. says money. Absolutely. Brian C. says the pilot. Yeah, I, I would say you're, you're right about that. Uh, Gary J. says Bernoulli's principle. James B. says excessive thrust. Um, Steve B. says the pilot and the motor. Uh, uh, Jason S. Again, great initials. Great name. Uh, you must have 
uh, leaked my presentation somewhere because he is spot on. Smart guy. Andreas, same thing. Uh, Jay, Jay says uh, skill. Uh, love it. A lot of money, a lot of pilots, a lot of airspeed, lift. Uh, magic, says John. Um, gasoline, says Michael. A lot of good stuff here. I want to share with you the three things that if you break it down really makes an airplane fly and is going to be the focus of this presentation. It's time, money, and motivation. You can't have two out of the three and become a private pilot, a sport pilot, an instrument pilot. It doesn't matter. You have to have time, money, and motivation all working in tune with one another. Did you know that 80% of students drop out before earning their certificate? 80%. And we can break down stat by stat. I've taken a discovery flight. I've taken 10 lessons. I've soloed. I've taken my written test. I've earned a medical. And you can see the dropout rate from there. But 80% of students who start lessons, I'm not talking take a discovery flight. I'm talking two or three lessons, actually get a logbook, and never complete their actual certificate. How could that be? How are the odds stacked so far against us in learning to fly? Well, AOPA actually did a really great study that you can pull up, and they broke it down into performance and impact scores, and they broke it down just like this. And if you look at the top five, the top five can all be broken down to time, money, and motivation. The number one reason people didn't finish was instructor support. Maybe it was support in their instructor from a scheduling standpoint, but wait, that's going to come up in a second. Instructor support from an educational standpoint. Instructor support from a mentorship and an accountability standpoint. Of the students that dropped out, they said their instructor was just not supportive enough, just not helpful enough. Perhaps their instructor was just there to build time until Delta Airlines called them and said, hey, you've got a job. But the biggest factor was instructor support. And that's why one thing we're going to talk about is the importance of finding a great flight instructor. The second reason people dropped out was value not get enough bang for our buck. Maybe flight training's just way too expensive. Maybe they thought they were be, being taken for a little bit. And geez, trust me, we hear all sorts of crazy stories of, you know, 70 hour student pilots that haven't soloed yet and all they do is cross countries and you just wanna grab their instructor and shake them and say, what are you doing? Comes back to instructor support. Look, here's the instructor again, number three, instructor effectiveness. How effective are they with their teaching style? If your instructor can't show you slow flight or talk you through slow flight, they're just not effective enough in their teaching style. Maybe it's a mismatch in teaching styles that we need to be concerned with. Information sharing. Maybe you weren't, these, these pilots weren't in a ground school. Maybe they didn't have access to all the same things like you guys have access to, like this great webinar, but information sharing. And the last one of the, of, we'll say the top five is scheduling. Uh, this could be scheduling with an instructor. Again, falls back on support and effectiveness. It could be scheduling. Maybe the flight school only has one airplane and they're busy or that airplane's down for maintenance or it's tough to have an instructor schedule and your schedule match up. I always give the example, if you wanna fly with me, well, I like flying Monday through Friday. Flying is, you know, that's when I do most of my flying. I like Saturdays and Sundays for my family. Well, you may work mon Monday through Friday, nine to five, and Saturday and Sunday is the only day you can fly. We wouldn't be a good match. We'd have a scheduling conflict there. But the top five, you can all make an argument for time, money, and motivation. And a lot of that motivation falls back on our instructors here that you can see on why people drop out in their flight train. It's not because of quality aircraft down here. It's not because they were terrified of the check ride or written test. It's not because of, geez, the lessons just weren't really organized enough for me. In fact, it has a, a large impact on performance, but little impact on the students themselves because you don't know what you don't know sometimes. Whether you're 61 or 141, 
sometimes you don't even know what that means, but you know you're working towards your private pilot certificate. You don't care how you go about doing it. So these are the things we look for. AOPA did a great study on this to help back up that 80% number. And this is why tonight I want to share with you five ways to balance time, money, and motivation. Really, five items that you need to make a priority in your flight training. So I need you to be a diligent note taker. So if you've got pen paper handy, grab that. You're going to want to write these things down. Maybe you want to take a screenshot or have your phone nearby to take pictures with your phone. But I'm about to share with you in a different way, I've, differently than I've ever taught it before, five priorities, I believe, to balance time, money, and motivation. Because again, you can't have one of three, two of three, you can have three of three and in an even amount. Time, money, and motivation. Let's go ahead and share those now. Priority number one, it's not very sexy, but you've got to do it. It's to budget. Let's start with my, first, my second bullet point here. Let me start by saying 40 hours is an absolute joke. I can tell you on one hand how many students that have done it in less than, or I'm sorry, less than, in 40 hours. What happens, though, is you march into a flight school and they give you a quote on a nice glossy brochure. and They say, yes, in this Cessna 172 November model at $100 an hour for 40 hours, it's going to cost you $4,000. And you look and go, oh, wow, that is so affordable. That's so great. And what they fa fail to tell you is 40 hours is the FAA minimum. That is it. Yet flight schools use this as a marketing tool to make the cost seem a little bit lower than it is. So you cannot budget for 40 hours. The national average is upwards of, I think I want to say 68 hours last I checked. It's high. It's, it's encroaching on double the FAA minimum. It's going up every time as we add more technically advanced aircraft and everything else. But 40 hours is an absolute joke. Don't fall into their marketing traps of some of these flight schools. And I encourage flight schools, that's not the proper way to market as well. You need to plan for the worst. Plan for the worst case scenario. Let's say, geez, I'm, I'm flying and I, I, they tell me I need eight grand. Well, let's budget 10 grand. So we have a little bit of cushion because things are going to happen. Life is going to get in the way. The airplane may be down for maintenance and you're not flying for two weeks. So you're going to spend an hour or two trying to catch up with where you last left off with that. And then most importantly, what people fail to do is they fail to plan for flying afterwards. It is awesome that you made a budget for earning your pilot certificate. But did you remember that you, you've got to stay current? You've got to stay proficient? How do you fly afterwards and beyond? You can't plan for just a certificate. You have to plan for flying afterwards. What's your commitment going to be? Jason, I want to fly, you know, once every two weeks. So twice a month is, geez, I'd be so happy if I could fly twice a month, once a month, whatever it may be, you need to start to budget that two, 300 bucks a month for this. Because if you're going to do in two hours a month, which is, geez, that is bare, bare minimum, you need to still budget for that. So plan for flying beyond that as well. You ready for priority number two? Priority number two, it sounds so simple, but it's, it's more difficult than it seems. Have a team on your side. Let me share with you the second bullet point here and some stories. Do you have a long-term flight instructor? Like I alluded to, not every flight instructor is like myself or like the great flight instructors we hire here at M0A.com. A lot of them are flight instructing to pay the bills and they're sitting in a hiring pool for Delta or some regional airline or some major carrier like Southwest. And they're just hoping to get a phone call that they're going to school uh, to learn to fly whatever Boeing or Airbus that airline is flying. Do you have a long-term flight instructor? And this is why it is a must, student pilots, 
it is a must for you to interview a flight instructor. You see, what happened with me is I just walked into the flight school. They said, oh, great, this individual is ready for you. Awesome. You guys go fly. And I was lucky. I, I ended up finding a great flight instructor that way, but I got very lucky. It doesn't always work that way. You, what if your schedules don't match up? What if you get passed around? In, during my commercial pilot training where I switched flight schools, I had eight different flight instructors. This is back when the airlines were hiring like crazy, and I would literally have an instructor for like one lesson, and then he or she would go off to the airlines, and I would be like, okay, I need a new CFI now. What happens there is one CFI knew that, man, Jason is really good at slow flight, but he's really bad at steep turns. But that information never got passed down to the next CFI. So with the next CFI, they wouldn't know that I was bad at this or good at this. And I'd have to prove myself all over and build another relationship with them. And it kind of set my training back. Find yourself a long-term flight instructor. And it doesn't have to be long-term. I'm talking years. You can knock out a private pilot certificate in a few months, but make sure that instructor is honest and open with you. Hey, I'm, I'm sitting in a Delta hiring pool one day and I'm kind of waiting for a phone call. I could be gone tomorrow. So I don't know if, if it's a good idea that we fly together taking on a brand new student. Do you have a long-term flight instructor? The next bullet point is do you have an aviation mentor or accountability partner? Is there going to be someone, and this could be your instructor, it could be the person that got you into aviation, but you have to have some sort of mentor or accountability partner. This is something we offer to all our online ground school members. They, we do webinars like this with them every Monday night. They have the office number. They can text. They can call. They can email, whatever it may be, and we're there for them. We're also saying, hey, how's that written test coming? Hey, you need to go knock out your medical. Hey, I know that check ride's coming up. Let's get that scheduled because you need those kind of nudges sometimes. Do you have an aviation mentor or accountability partner? And the last one, which is just as important, is is the family on board? You don't want to come home to a bunch of negativity of, oh, you're learning to fly and you're wasting money on this. I can't believe it. You've got to have the family on board. Otherwise, without the family on board, you lose the motivation side of things and you lose your purpose to fly. This is something we dealt with so much in the movie Flying Again. In fact, if you've seen it, you can maybe see where I'm going with this. Rich Ayat, one of our rusty pilots in there, was an instrument rated pilot. And one day his wife just said, listen, you know, I'm really just not crazy about this flying thing anymore. I really don't want to do it. And just like that, he lost his motivation to fly to continue to learn, to not only stay current, but proficient. And he became a rusty pilot. Even beyond your flight training, time, money, and motivation still play such a factor. Is the family on board? Literally, like, are they going to be on board and fly with you to these cool trips and vacations you want to do? And if not, are they just okay with you doing it? Are they supportive of what you're doing? It sounds so silly, but it can really Bring down the motivation if the family is not on board. Let's keep moving forward here. Priority number three. Online ground school members have heard me say this a million times, so I'm going to work through this one quickly, but it is so important. Learn everything you can on the ground. I want your ground school knocked out. I want you to be chair flying all your flight maneuvers. Knock out the written test. Earn your medical certificate. At the end of this webinar, I'm going to share with you what my dream student looks like that would come to me to learn to fly. A lot of these things, in fact, all four of these are in that dream student list. Knock out your ground school early. Get it all done. Chair fly your flight maneuvers. You've heard me talk about chair flying before. It's sitting down wherever you're at and thinking through your emergency procedures thinking through slow flight, talking yourself through a power on, power off stall. I've seen people go as far as spray paint their backyard uh, to look like a runway and they walk the traffic pattern and say the radio calls out loud, out loud walking around their backyard. It sounds ridiculous, but I promise you it saves you time and money. And it helps with the motivation part when you're not able to fly. You see, ground school isn't just for rainy days. 
Ground school is for all the time, especially before your training. Priority number three is learn everything you can on the ground. As my friend Eric Crump, the director of aerospace at Polk State College, says, the airplane is a terrible classroom. Learn everything you can on the ground. Priority number four, make a commitment and have your CFI, your, certi your certificated flight instructor, do the same. Make a commitment. When I say make a commitment, I mean commit the time. For example, hey, Mr. CFI, every Tuesday, every Thursday at 12, right at lunchtime, I'm yours. Don't book anything else until further notice. Every Tuesday and Thursday at 12, we have a flight lesson. Unless the weather's bad or there's a maintenance issue, we're flying, we're meeting at the airport, we're doing something at the airport. Commit the time. It is so hard when you say, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, let, me, let me get back with you on my next lesson. I got to check my schedule. You never get that next lesson booked, and you just slowly fall off the map. You have to commit the time. And your CFI has to be able to do the same thing. This is why it's so important to make sure your schedules match. Commit the time. Have your CFI do the same. Pick a day. Pick a time. I'd like to see two flights a week, preferably, and commit to it week after week after week. Commit and set aside the money. This is the hardest thing to do. Because you could do your flight train and pay as you go. You don't need to just fork over 10 grand and say, here's 10 grand. Geez, I'm, I'm kind of nervous about this. Hope this all works out. You can pay it for it as you go. But what I mean is commit and set aside the money. Maybe your homework is to march down to your bank tomorrow and open up an account that you call your dream account or your flight training account and start putting money away in there. And once you've saved up what you deem is the appropriate amount based on your budget, that is your flight training account. And you pay as you go. You can pay an hour at a time, whatever it may be. Certainly ask if there's a discount for bulk time purchase. But you can pay as you go and you've got the money set aside. It's a lot easier when that money is already set aside because it's so important to increase the frequency of your flying to get the most out of it. My third or my final bullet here is to commit a study plan. A lot of our ground school members say, my commitment is I'm going to watch two um, Jason videos before going to bed inside the online ground school. And they commit to that. Whatever it may be for you, I'm going to take one practice written test per day until I take my written test. I'm going to read one chapter and pass your private pilot check ride until the day of my check ride and I've read the book four times. Whatever it may be, you've got to commit the time for flying, commit the time to study, and commit and set aside the money. Again, time and money are the biggest killers of flight training dreams. Anybody will tell you that. The fifth and final priority is this. It's do what you can now. Do what you can now. I understand that there are seasons in life. Maybe you have kids in college right now and flight training is just not feasible. Maybe you're taking care of elderly parents. Maybe you're like myself and you have young children and life is just too crazy. Well, life has a funny way of kind of just always being a little bit crazy as we go through these seasons. But do what you can now. Maybe you can't afford to fly until the kids are out of college, but you can start immersing yourself in things like you're doing here right now. You can take action and hop in our online ground school or do some sort of ground school. Get the written tests done. Go get a medical. Go take a discovery flight. Make sure this is something you really like. Start chair flying. Invest in a decent flight simulator. There's so many things you can do now. Just because you're in a season of life where you can't afford or have the time to learn to fly now, well, your season is coming where you are going to learn to fly. But let's build the foundation. Let's put the cornerstone down and let's do what we can now in the flight training arena. It may be a ground school, it may be chair flight, it may be a flight simulator. Just do whatever you can now to make that happen. The five priorities to help you balance time, money, and motivation. See, I told you, 
that would be quick, fast. I can always go back and show you another one and talk about it further if you need me to. But before I do that, I want to share with you what I would call my dream student. The kind of student that flight instructors are like, man, I am so excited to fly with you because we get to do all the fun stuff. Let me grab a sip of my tea and I'll reveal what my dream student looks like to you. My dream student is someone who comes to me, ground school is completed, written test is passed, medical certificate is earned, assuming you need a medical. Um, if you're going sport pilot, obviously you don't. And if we're, you could be listening to this recording and maybe there is no medical requirement if Pilot Protection Act 2 ever gets passed. You've got the money set aside and you have the time to fly. It still comes down to time and money. But when you come to me, ground school complete, written test done, medical certificate earned, money set aside, and time to fly, we get to do the fun stuff now, which is just that, fly the airplane. There is no nagging, hey, you need to do that written test. How many pilots that are you're already certificate on this webinar, have, and you can just type in the control panel, hey, that's me, um, know what I mean when I say the written test can be a monkey on your back. I can relate to that because I, I really seriously thought my private pilot training, I never knew a written test existed. I thought I just had to take a check ride and fly with some FAA guy and I'd get it. And literally, I was prepping for my check ride. My instructor said, no, Jason, you don't understand. You've got to take a written test. I said, what's a written test? What do you mean? And I had to go back. I was delayed almost two weeks because I had to go study for a written test. And you know that... How you study for a written test and how you study for a check ride are two totally different things. So my advice to you out there, student pilots, is get that written test done now. And it starts by completing a ground school and getting that written test done. Aviation mentors out there, I need you to start nagging your mentees to get their written tests done. It is truly a monkey on your back. But when you come to me with all those things done, it's time to do the fun stuff, which is fly. If you knock out these five things, it saves you so much money and so much time on your flight training. Money set aside and time to fly. You know, time and money are a funny thing. I find students all the time that have the time, but don't have the money. Then I find students that have the money, but they don't have the time. Maybe they're a busy business professional and they're making just money hand over fist, but they can't enjoy it because they work so much in making that money and they don't have the time to fly. We have to work to find that balance. That is what's so important here, guys. So what is the next step for you? How can we do what we can now? How can we take action on this together? Those of you who have been on these webinars know what I'm about to say. Those of you who haven't, let me share this with you uh, briefly here. I'm only doing this once in 2016. The entire year of 2016, I promise. In fact, this will be the last webinar in 2016 where you hear me say it because this is the last free webinar I'm doing uh, in January and certainly with this promotion. This promotion actually closes January 31st, 11.59 p.m. It'll be Eastern Standard Time. If you become a member of our number one rated online ground school, gold, silver, bronze member, even Pilots Inner Circle member. Pilots Inner Circle membership is geared towards more individuals who are already pilots but want to live out that good pilot is always learning type mantra with the webinars. You know, we do a webinar with our online ground school members and our Pilots Inner Circle members just like this every Monday night. Last Monday night, or this week, I'm sorry, we did a great mock check ride. It's an awesome opportunity to get that mentorship, get that accountability, interact with myself and this great team here at m0a.com every single Monday night on the phones as well via email uh, and through our number one rated online ground school. If you become a bronze, silver, gold, or even pilots inner circle member, I am giving away all of our books for free. They're an ebook format, but that is the ebook of Pass Your Private Pilot Check Ride, the ebook and the audiobook I just mentioned to you. Pass Your Instrument Pilot Check Ride, ebook and audiobook, In Flight Emergencies, The Secret of Perfect Landings, Uncle Larry's book, uh, The Private Pilot Blueprint. These are the books you're getting for free. The audiobook for the Check Ride series is huge. Like I said, 
You pop it on your iPhone or your MP3 player, and while you're walking the dog, while you're, you have a long commute to work, you can be immersing yourself in aviation. We say that a good pilot is always learning, but are we truly living it out? This is your opportunity to do that. So visit groundschoolacademy.com, click enroll now, join today to get all signed up. You can see the gold, silver, bronze, and pilots inner circle packages and what they offer for you and the rates. It is a monthly charge because you get access to the webinars. The course is always being up to date. And most importantly, you get that accountability. I'm just going to go through them real quick. FA approved 61, 141, ground school, all 4K video. You get unlimited FAA practice tests. And of course, I actually endorse you for the FAA written. So even if you don't have a flight instructor yet, I can provide that endorsement for you automatically. It's done, and you can go to any testing center and take that written before you even have a CFI, which is awesome. You get access to the weekly webinars and mock check rides just like we're doing here this evening. Every Monday night, I do a webinar without fail with our online ground school members. And online ground school members, I think in about 60 days, you're going to be very impressed with what we're doing new webinar wise. I don't wanna let the cat out of the bag, um, but you're gonna be very impressed how the webinar game is going to seriously step up some. Uh, you'll, you're gonna love it. You get access to our FAA written test prep boot camp, which is geared just towards that, just towards getting you ready for that written test. Of course, you get the M0A mentorship from our great team of CFIs here. And of course, you get the craziest guarantee in the industry, which is pass your check ride or I'll pay for it which seems nuts, but it is a product we stand behind so greatly. So go to groundschoolacademy.com to get signed up, and you'll literally get those books tonight to download, to listen to, to enjoy on top of all the videos. And then we'll be chatting next Monday night on the webinar. It's a lot of great stuff. So you can see some of the screenshots here. If you love our YouTube videos, if you love my teaching style, because I teach in all these videos, if I know I'm, I talk fast, I know I talk with my hands, I'm very excited, I'm passionate about what we do. Everyone here at M0A, we don't feel like we have a job. It's, it, we get to have fun all day because we're dealing with airplanes and we're doing what we truly love here. And hopefully that shows in our product and in our videos. Um, the great in the cockpit videos that you've grown to love, awesome 4K footage in the studio, great simulations, great animations, all for you guys. And of course, when you sign up, you get access to all the books in ebook format, audio books as well. I promise you, this is the only time I'm doing this promotion in 2016. This is the last time I'm saying this on a webinar. You've got till January 31st at 11.59 to get signed up um, before I actually close this deal down. You can still become a member, but you just won't get access to all the books for free. You'll have to go out and buy the books individually. Groundschoolacademy.com. And some of you might be wondering, Jason, I'm already a member. How do I access that? Well, if you're already a member, go to groundschoolacademy.com forward slash books. You have to be logged in to access this page. If you're already a member or if you're in the process of signing up right now, go to groundschoolacademy.com forward slash books. You got to be logged in. Make sure you're logged in first. Um, and then you can download that zip file and unzip those books and get them onto whatever device you are using. Let me get the screen back up so you guys can see that groundschoolacademy.com. Guys, I'm going to take your questions now. Any questions you guys have, it is aviation related. I am more than happy to chat about it. There's a lot of people on this webinar, so I'm going to do my best to take most questions here. But if you have a question, now is your chance to ask away. Uh, by the way, one last thing on the ground school, because I see a few people talk, talking about it, and then I will let the team handle any sales related questions. You sign up for a membership, you get private instrument, and soon, when I say soon, I'm talking February sometime. I know John, our director, is on this webinar, so he's really going to be mad at me when I announce this publicly. February sometime, we're going to have a functioning commercial pilot ground school as well. So one membership gets you access to all courses, private instrument and soon-to-be commercial. Now, the cool thing about that is you may be working on your instrument, However, you want to, it's been a while since you earned your private pilot, so you want to go back over some of the private pilot content again. 
Well, you can do that. One membership, all courses. So feel free to go through the private pilot stuff and then go through the instrument pilot stuff. It is all there for you. So um, that is cool. You will be able to enjoy um, that. So uh, anyways, let's start uh, taking some of these uh, questions. Riley says, um, Jason, uh, is there a job market for student and entry level pilots? Uh, Riley, there certainly is. And let me share with you where to go. So Riley, we do a free podcast series uh, available on iTunes and Android. I want you to go find the Commercial Pilot Podcast. Just go in the iTunes store and search. There's the Private Pilot Podcast, the Instrument Pilot Podcast, the Commercial Pilot Podcast, the CFI Podcast, and Inspire Aviation. Five podcasts. As crazy as that sounds. Riley, go find the Commercial Pilot Podcast, and I do an episode on there. Specific, I can't remember the title, but you'll see it. Um, like low time flying jobs, like jobs you can do with a fresh commercial pilot certificate. And the funny thing is, I think I share five of them and I've done like all five of them from, I've been a banner tower, I've been a traffic pilot, I've been a fish spotter, as crazy as that sounds. I've been a, per, I've been a grocery boy pilot, I kid you not, very, very wealthy lady and flew groceries uh, to her uh, in the Bahamas, all sorts of crazy jobs I've held in aviation. I talk about those in there. Um, and you can certainly earn um, all of those um, there. Um, Mike B, uh, our ground school member, absolutely it does. So you're covered with that, my friend. Um, let's see. Uh, Ken says, Jason, love the webinars. Well, I'm glad you love the webinars. Ken says, what do you mean earn your medical? Maybe earn's not the right word to use. For, for some people who've struggled to get their medical, it does feel like you've earned something at the end of it. Uh, you guys are probably shaking your head uh, up and down saying, yeah, it does. Um, earn your medical certificate. Go and take your medical exam and be issued a certificate saying, yes, I am fit to fly. Now, if there's some sort of medication issue or some sort of disability that's hindering you from getting that, well, I mean, We've helped people with diabetes, uh, earn their medical, all sorts of stuff. And trust me, when you battle the FAA legal team, it, you definitely earn it at the end of it. So earn is the, properly the, the right verbiage uh, to use here. Um, um, let's see. Uh, Sakar said, what would your advice be to me uh, on losing motivation due to my instructor not being there? Sakar, that's tough. Um, if your instructors actually like left you, like they've gone off to an airline, or if it's just tough, like you're motivated to fly when your instructor is there, but when you go home, it's hard to find the time to study. It's hard to find the motivation to study. And I think we've all been there. It's easy to get so excited about something, and then it's just as easy to get overwhelmed. And and that's one thing we try to do different. That's why our online ground school is different because. I don't want to overwhelm you and say, hey, buddy, here's 400 videos. Good luck. Let me know when you're done. No, I, I want to take you through there step by step. And the course is laid out so it's very easy, very digestible to work your way through. And you get access to us as well to say, listen, hey, man, how's that going? Did you have a question on that video? Let me help you with that because you need that personal interaction. It's hard to just have interaction with aviation only when you go to the airport. It's a tough thing to do. So um, that is just my uh, opinion with that. Um, Carlos says, what do you think is the most important factor for a private pilot check ride? Carlos, I could do, I could go on and on about that. Um, I'm going to send you, we did a, um, we did a webinar earlier this month. Maybe Matt or Scott can send you the link. Um, called what to expect on your private pot check ride. It goes through everything from what to wear on your private pot check ride to what to expect. And then we do a mock check ride with the kind of questions you're going to be asked. So um, find that it's on YouTube. If not, I'm sure Matt or Scott, one of those guys are digging it up right now um, for you there. Um, so that's that. Um, um, David says, the owner of my flight school is the guy who does the check rides and exam. He's the type of guy that treats students horrible and kind of makes you feel dumb. Unfortunately, it's the closest airport to me. I love my instructor. Is there a way I can go to another airport to take the check ride? Absolutely you can, David. You as the student have the right to take your check ride wherever you want. However, keep in mind, 
if a, if a check right examiner is not going to come to you, you're going to have to go to them. So now, David, you're doing your check ride in at an unfamiliar airport, an unfamiliar airspace, and that can add a little challenge to it. Unfortunately, our closest check ride examiner is 70 miles away for my students. So we would go down to the Winter Haven Airport, and it's the same kind of thing. So we try to do a cross country or two down there to get them used to that area because it is a new situation. So there's that. Craig says, already completed my solo. My CFI is so busy. It's nearly impossible for our schedules to agree. Craig, that is so tough. And I've been there. Um, despite what people say, aviation is booming. Uh, people can talk about bad economy this and, and China's dragging down the S&P 500 and all this sort of stuff. But all I see is abundance in aviation, no doubt. Um, and it shows with your flight instructor being so busy. And he's probably busy with students. So a lot of these flight instructors also have corporate gigs. It is very tough to lock them down sometimes. And it's going to be important for you, Craig, to maybe have a conversation. Say, hey, listen. Um, is it possible to get on a more regular schedule? Could you at least like guarantee me every Friday at 10, I'm yours? Could, could we just start with that? And then we can work in a few other lessons sporadically here and there. But at least if I know I can have you once a week and just don't book anything else, that'd be how I'd go about it. If not, Craig, he may be a great guy or she may be a great girl, great flight instructor. And I'm sure they are if they're so busy. But it might be time to say, listen, I just have to find – you're awesome. But I've got to find somebody that meets my schedule because this is getting ridiculous and it's costing me money and, and it is because you're not flying and you did slow flight steep turns and stalls last lesson and two weeks go by and you find yourself repeating Craig the same lesson because two weeks of rust have, has built up and it just it happens so just stay stay on top of that I know that's would be a hard uh hard conversation to have but um certainly you can uh you can talk uh with that um, let's, um, I'm just reading some of these, uh, Cody, uh, already, uh, working on that. That is almost complete. That's Cody with a K. Um, Mike B says, I'm just getting back to training about 70 hours in and a 152 and I'm soloed. Eventually want a Cessna 172. Should I switch to 172 to finish up? So 152 to 172, there is going to be a little bit of a learning curve, but it's not a bad transition. Mike, if the wallet allows for it, by all means, go for it. In fact, one thing, this is a little bit, you know, in the future, one thing I really advocate for people doing their instrument is earn your instrument rating in the airplane you're going to do the instrument flying in. So, Mike, we're in your situation that – Okay, you could do it in a 152, then transition to a 172 to save some money, um, and then do the do your instrument in a 172. Um, but if the wallet allows for it, by all means, go for it. If money's a little bit tight or it's a concern, I'd stay where you're at and upgrade to that uh, eventually. Um, Clint says, what would you recommend hour-wise to stay proficient after you're getting your private pilot certificate? Um, Clint, I, at a minimum, two hours a month. And you could get that in one log, one long cross country. Um, or I'd prefer you got it in two one hour little lessons or two one hour hamburger hops, whatever it may be. Um, two hours a month is like bare minimum, just scraping by. Uh, obviously, I want to see you flying more than that, but kind of budget for that. So, Clint, if you can do two hours a month, and again, maybe you become a Pilots Inner Circle member with us, you say, geez. I'm going to commit to two hours a month, and I'm going to commit to every Monday night. Uh, I'm going to be on one of Jason's webinars learning something because you'll be amazed at just by staying immersed in the lingo and the language and learning something new and keeping your aviation brain moving that you will be uh, uh, way more proficient um, in your flying. So just some advice um, with that. Let's um, – see here um i see a bunch of people say they want to come fly with us craig uh carlos uh matt is going to be your point of contact for that you guys ready for that it is matt m-a-t-t -T, at m-z-e-r-o-a dot com matt at m-zero-a dot com he'll be your point of contact for anything like that i know the schedule is 
vastly, it, it, it's, it's very, very backed up. Um, so you're going to have to be on a waiting list, but Matt is the one to get you on that waiting list. Matt, M-A-T-T, at M-Z-E-R-O-A dot com will be your one to reach out for, I see a bunch, few people talking about um, with, um, with that. Uh, Christopher asked, how long does the online ground school take to complete? What's the schedule look like? So it's, it's at your own pace. You start, you finish when you do. You can start whenever you want to um, and you finish when you do. I mean, if, I've had students knock it out, private pilot, in as fast as a month, but that's like ground school was their job. Um, more realistically, two, two and a half months, you can knock out the private pilot. That's watching two to three videos per day. It's self-paced. It's self, well, it's sort of, it's self-directed along with the assistance of myself and Matt and Larry and Scott and the, and the team here at M0A.com and Ashley um, to make that happen, plus the webinars and everything else. So uh, you can certainly do that. Um, George says, is it better to fly during the winter? Well, that's a tough question because it depends where you're at. In Florida, it's better to fly during the winter, but not so much in Michigan or North Dakota. Uh, so it depends certainly on uh, uh, where you are at um, with, uh, with those sort of things. Um, uh, Mo says, what do you do if you want to learn to fly but don't have the money? Mo, I find if you want something bad enough, you always find a way to make it happen, my friend. Um, geez, I would wash airplanes at the flight school in exchange for flight hours. Um, there's a gentleman named Carl Valeri. Scott, if you're still in the webinar, could you share Carl's um, website? Is it Aviation Careers? Uh, I don't know. the, the I think it's Aviation Careers. Um, has a awesome book on aviation scholarships. I'm talking scholarships that will like straight up pay for – a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars towards your certificate. So there, there's these things are out there. You just have to be willing to work for it. Um, so watch for that. And Scott Mo came in at nine forty-five was when his question came in. If you're looking for uh, Mo, and you can help him with uh, that. Um, I'm continuing to answer some of these questions. Ricardo says, oh, what is the BFR ground prep? Oh, inside the online ground school, the BFR ground prep um, is the groundwork needed for your biannual flight review. So before you do a BFR, I can actually do all the groundwork for you. Um, so you go into your BFR and just have to do the flying portion. You don't have to do the ground portion of a uh, biannual flight review. Your flight review you do every two years to stay current. So um, that's that. Pretty cool. Um, more questions, guys. I'm going to take three more questions here and then wrap it up. I am an old married man with a baby. Uh, so you got to go to bed early when all that uh, when all that happens here. So let's see. Three more questions. Type them in. If I missed your question, maybe copy and paste it. I'm going to take three more questions. We're going to wrap this thing up here. I'm going to grab a sip of tea. Let's see. Um, let me. Jason D, your question. He says, uh, currently not medically approved to fly. Worst case scenario, could I still get a sport pilot certificate? So, well, that depends. And maybe Larry can chime in here and help if he wants to type something in on this one uh, to follow up with what I'm about to tell you. Um, I guess I have to answer your question with a question. Have you been denied the medical, Jason? Let's start with that because uh, we need to overcome that if we can overcome that. Or did you figure out like, geez, I just don't know if I get approved or do I want to fight the good fight? But are we, we can wait for third class medical reform or you could go sport pilot with it as well. So um, I would need to follow up. Oh, I see uh, uh, you reply to that. Larry, maybe you could step in there and help. Uh, Jason D, if um, if Larry's still on, it's a little late for Larry. I don't know if he's stuck around this long. If not, Jason D, excuse me, I'll make sure I get an answer um, for you. Um, George F says, "What is the best aircraft to start flying in?" Well, it's easy to say it's the one that's available and the one that's ready to go, but that's not always the case as well. You certainly want to be picky with the airplane you choose. Um, is this an airplane you could see yourself renting in the future? The classic trainers are one Cessna 150s, 152s, Cessna 172s. The new trainers are the SR20s, the Diamond DA20s, DA40s, of course the older Pipers, 
Cherokee, Warrior, Archer, all great aircraft. And what I name there is almost every flight school is going to have one of those. We could get into a high wing, low wing debate for sure. Obviously, I'm a high wing kind of guy, but hey, that's just me. Um, I'm a Cessna, I had a Cessna 150. I now have a Cessna 172. That's just me. Um, learn and what you what you can afford and then upgrade maybe and what you'd like to train in and or own in the future. So that would be my advice to you. Um, I'm just reading some more of uh, these. Uh, Larry, maybe you could also help uh, Chris W that came in at 950. That might be up your alley as well. Um, um, I'm just reading some of these. Gary, very cool, man. Excited to hear about uh, that. Um, Chris T., who is a ground school member. I'm going to take that question, and then we're going to wrap this thing up. He said, VFR into IMC. Um, 187 seconds is what AOPA says, VFR into IMC until the time of an accident. If you're What, what we're saying is, you're a VFR visual pilot. You accidentally fly into a cloud. AOPA has come out and said they found, looking at NTSB reports, that an accident happens within 187 seconds of flying into a cloud. That's, that's scary fast. How do we recommend training for a 180-degree turn? The 180-degree turn is one of the most important maneuvers you can learn for exactly what you said, Chris. You fly into a cloud 187 seconds. That, I did not know that stat. That's mind-boggling to me. How I train for that is this. I put my foggles on. I fly straight ahead for a bit. And I practice my standard rate 180-degree turn. Sounds so simple. Now practice that on a turbulent day. Now practice it as a timed turn. Did you know, private pilot guys, if you do a standard rate turn for 60 seconds, it's 180 degrees. If I turn for one minute at standard rate using my turn coordinator, that's 180 degrees. I don't even need to see my directional gyro or my magnetic compass. I know 180 degrees by timing it. I can use my watch to do something like that. The 180 degree turn, VFR and IMC is what I'm talking about, not, a, not like a engine failure on takeoff, different story, is such an important maneuver to learn, absolutely. Just beautiful, beautiful um, stuff. So um, very, very cool stuff. Listen, thanks so much for all that uh, you guys do. Thanks so much for being such a huge blessing to myself, my beautiful wife, Ashley, our gorgeous daughter, Ella, this great team here at M0A.com. I hope you guys took action this evening and signed up for the Ground School Academy. Again, groundschoolacademy.com to get those free books, get access to the Ground School, learn more. 2016 is your year to take action on your flight training dreams. If you're still on the fence, shoot me an email, jason at m0a.com. Be glad to chat with you about it, or one of our team members would be glad to chat with you about that. And listen, this promotion closes January 31st at 11.59 p.m. I will not be doing the Become a Member, Get All My Books Free promotion again in the year 2016. This is your last opportunity. If you wanted to buy all those books separately, it'd be like three or four hundred bucks. Um, this is your opportunity to get in at a steep, steep discount, guys. So groundschoolacademy.com. Check it out. Become a member tonight because I'll be chatting with you guys again on Monday for Monday night's member-only webinar. Guys, enjoy the rest of your evening. And most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great night, guys. See ya.